But you're, you're just um, assuming that. No, no. That's an elaborate software emulation that proved it. The octave is the most destructive possible way for waves to interfere. Yeah, well, that's the output of the software al algorithm. But you know, we could go back there, but I want to finish this thought. It, it's, it, very few people are aware of that. But it's goldenmean.info slash matrix, and we actually present the software to do that emulation as well. So very few people are aware of that, but it's a, it's a fact. I state it as a fact because we investigated and did the software emulations, and it's a fact, in my view, that's incontrovertible, that the most destructive possible wave interference by ratio is octave, powers of two, and the most constructive ratio is golden mean, for sure. If you have uh, one golden ratio multiplied by another, isn't that a pair of twos? No. <laughs> No, 0.618 times 1, t t or 1.618 1 is a power of golden ratio, not a power of 2. But if, if, it's a, if it's a wave that's a certain wave, and you multiply by 2... No, no, that, no you multiply, you multiply 1.618 times 1.618. 1 right. That's not 2. That's squared. Yeah, Let, let's finish this thought. Okay. So, yeah, so, so the square relationship... I mean, powers of two is destructive interference. It's not evil, it's just simply charge isolating. It's very good for a hexagram to store honey, but it's very bad for your house to be built all of powers of two. It's good for secrets, bad for distribution. And life is based on distribution, not secrets. That's, that's God's message to you when you die, you know? <laughs> if you had too many secrets, you don't die well. Very simple physics. <laughs> You're not a shareable wave. It's actually plasma physics. <laughs> but we, we, we want to go to the core of the issue here at the moment, which is why this makes centripetal force. So these waves are adding and multiplying recursively, constructively, not just their wave length, wavelength, but their wave velocities. So when the wave speeds, the wave fronts add and multiply, that turns compression into acceleration. And that is the cause of gravity. Einstein didn't like the idea of infinite velocity. Actually, Einstein thought that the speed of light was a speed limit, and he was very, 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 very wrong. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Because he didn't see where the plasma went through the center point, which is the Planck length, which it goes times, it goes through the Planck length center, in the case of hydrogen, by speeds which are golden ratio multiples times the speed of light, actually. And that's what my theory of gravity requires, is that we will be measuring velocities faster than the speed of light, which are golden mean ratio multiples times the speed of light. And Professor Raymond Chow has already made a measurement of 4.23 times c, the speed of light, which is golden mean cubed, actually. So we believe there's lots of evidence that the speed of light is not a speed limit. However, it is a threshold condition requiring golden ratio to get through. Be more accurate. But let's, but let's, not, let's not jump ahead of ourselves. We, the point here is simple. We would like you to know why does this create suction? I mean, gravity is the suction for charge. What Einstein said, that one of the things he did right, was he said that gravity was not able to be distinguished from acceleration. He was right about that. And what is acceleration, accelerating? I call it charge. You could call it ether or the quantum foam. You have waves in a compressible medium. Call it the ether, the quantum foam, the time-space continuum. I call it charge. Plus and minus charge is just the compression versus the rarefaction of the quantum foam, the compressible media of which everything is made. Yes, sir? Where does magnetism fit into all this electricity? We could... We can have that conversation, but just to put, try to put it very briefly, that charge, all charge fields, and therefore all waves, actually self-organize into toroidal shapes. And on the surface of that toroid, if you measure the flow of that charge this way, you call it magnetism. If you me measure the same flow of that same charge this way, you call it voltage. You see? So it, it, voltage is called pressure, amperage is called flow, vice, vice versa. But, but magnetism and electric fields are the same stuff. They're made of charge. And when, when, you, when you measure the vector this way versus this way, you call one voltage and one you call the other magnetism. That's why some people say, well, that was electric and this is magnetic and that's separate. That's just a schizophrenia, actually. That's childish. It's a unified field and the relationship between electricity and magnetism is perpendicular just because of the way you happen to measure it. So Precisely. Exactly. That's exactly what I'm saying. Thank you, sir. Exactly. That's exactly what I'm saying. So, back to our point. 
We're saying that you need to know why does this create suction or a centripetal force at the center. So remember we said the waves are adding and multiplying their phase velocity. Here's a simple example. The surfer is riding here and the main wave is going this way and there's a curl coming down the side of the wave this way and there's a tube right here. The surfer gets in the tube and then the waves collapse and the surfer is shot like a gun, right? <laughs> that's, the adding, that's the adding and multiplying of the phase velocities, okay? It's just a way of thinking about it. But in fact, it's true. We have actually measured heterodyning in golden ratio, in megahertz, in our little lab, haven't we? <laughs> it's really cool. So, the point is when the waves add and multiply by golden ratio, they constructively, repeatedly add and multiply the wave speed as well. That's what Einstein missed. If he'd have known it, he'd have got it. Very simple. But because physics doesn't realize that, they do not know why an object falls to the ground. But now you know. That's the reason gravity happens. That's the reason gravity exists. Another way of saying that is that atoms only have gravity to the extent the nucleus is fractal or golden ratio to the electrons. And my new equation was proof, is proof that that's specifically true of hydrogen. So visualize what's happening very simply. The waves are adding and multiplying the speed of the wave, the wave front velocity called phase velocity. So out of this kind of compression, some of the charge, some of the electrical inertia is converted from compression into the acceleration of charge. The origin of the acceleration of charge. Remember, if you know what causes acceleration of charge, you know what causes gravity. Because Einstein did get that right, acceleration is the same as gravity. So, this is the origin of acceleration, because some of that compression, adding and multiplying recursive, the speed of the wave front, and if they met in a cube, the waves couldn't add and multiply recursively. They'd start destructively interference, and and the phase velocities wouldn't keep constructively adding and multiplying, and gravity would not exist. Okay, this is why golden ratio specifies the radii of hydrogen, and my new equation was proof that that extends right down to the level of Planck in the center of hydrogen. So this is a way, when pine cones meet this way, imagine two vortex are meeting, and the pine cones are crossing in the center, they're getting screwed, so to speak. <laughs> it's otherwise known as embedding in physics. <laughs> uh, that, that process of two pine cones meeting from opposite directions, if you're into physics, phase conjugate optics is nice to imagine here, where the two lasers are meeting coming in opposite directions, and they begin to implode, they make centripetal force, and they create self-organization. And actually, they call it time reversal, but it just means that the waves that go faster than the speed of light go backward in time. And so that geometry of pine cones meeting like that, pine cones kissing, creates a suction for charge at center because the phase velocities are now being pushed through the Planck length at center. So 